Mike White and the Texas Longhorns. Ashton Maloney leading off. She'll play left field. Mia Scott at batting second, playing right. First pitch of the night is a chopper pass short into center field. A base hit by Maloney. Maloney, the leading hitter on the year for UT. A single on the first pitch she sees tonight. Well, just doing that from that leadoff spot, I mean, doing her job. First pitch she sees, puts it right through the outfield. Maloney, 419 uh, on the season and 455 her average in conference games. Here's Mia Scott to the plate. Well, they're in tight on the good, corners. Good. Viviana ball, Martinez Indiana. will bat third, playing short. Reese Atwood, power bat, the designated player hitting cleanup. Katie Stewart catching, batting fifth. Jolie Mitchell, we talked about playing third base, batting sixth. Caden Henry in center, batting seventh. Melissa Washington at second base, batting eighth. Bella Dayton plays first and bats ninth for the Longhorns. 32 and six on the year, 11 and four in the Big 12. Sitting in third place in the Big 12 standings. Kelly, as you mentioned, coming off a series win. Yes, a series victory over the Oklahoma Sooners. I think you told me earlier it was the first time that's happened since 2009 for Texas. For Texas, yes, to win a series against OU. 09. <laughs> 2009. <laughs> first time Oklahoma has lost a Big 12 series since uh, Missouri in 2011. So it has been a while. Great accomplishment by UT last weekend in Austin. Outside, pops out of the hands of Sidney Coyazos. Tracks down the ball. Maloney not able to advance from first base. Riley Crandall in the circle. There's the all-white at home tonight. Texas in the all-burnt orange. It's fouled away to the left side. Remains two balls, two strikes. Texas leads the all-time series with Baylor. 38 wins, 25 losses. Baylor did sweep Texas last year. It was a Friday night game in Austin and uh, Saturday and Sunday games here in Waco. They were fun to watch. 2-2 Two -two pitch, waves at it. And it's ball three. They do appeal at first base. You gotta respect that in-state rivalry. I mean, something just about, you know, 100 miles away. Being able to play in Big 12, that is not going to be the case next year. Yeah, long time series. It's Luke Fowl out of play down the left field line. This could possibly be the, uh, that was the final regularly scheduled Big 12 series between these two. I think they may find a way to play each other in non conference, don't you think, moving forward? You'd hope so. It's just good competition. And both of these coaches just, they love to schedule those. Tough off seasons. There's a shot to center field that is deep, and that is gone. Two run home run off the bat of Mia Scott. Scott hits home run in conference play, her first of the season in league play, and stakes Texas to a 2 0 lead. It's a good thing that scoreboard right there has a net on it. <laughs> it was as high as it could be. It was a shot into a bit of a wind blowing out of the south about 10 to 15 miles an hour. Didn't slow that ball down one bit. Home run, Texas. Mia Scott on the season. It is home run number three. Her first in Big 12 play, and it's a 2-0 Texas lead before an out is recorded. There's Viviana Martinez to the plate. Martinez, three-hole hitter, the shortstop for UT. Miller in tight on the corners, loops this one toward short, Presley Pylon. It's quick work of that one for the first out here in the first inning. We talked about Riley Crandall just putting in so many innings in that in the circle for this Baylor team. And, um, this first inning has always been kind of a test to her. Can she hit her spots? Can she find the strike zone for the umpire and then take some time to settle in? And it's really hard to settle in when you're down 2-0 now uh, and only have one out. And here's Reese Atwood to the plate. Atwood a 385 hitter on the year. Texas on the season, a 362 team average, second best of any Big 12 school. Big 12 play through 299, third best of any team in the league. 
Wood sends this one high in the air. Shallow center, the second baseman, Casey West, goes back and makes the catch in shallow right field. Second out of the first inning. It was a big out to get at Wood. She on the season is their home run leader with 12 and 53 RBIs. Nobody in the Big 12 has more RBIs than Reese Atwood. She's five hits away from hitting the 100 hit club. I mean, and just as a sophomore. So she's, so he's a great bat. Here is Katie Stewart, the catcher. 344 average for Stewart. Two down in the inning, two runs home for Texas. The pitch is a called strike. It's no balls, two strikes on Stewart. You can see Crandall just really starting to settle in here a little bit and just got two outs on her now and jumps ahead of this hitter. Yeah, but kudos to that Texas Texas hitting staff who jumping on mm -hmm. early pitches and getting a runner on in the first pitch and, and then taking that mistake that she left over the plate over the center field fence. Counts one ball, two strikes on Katie Stewart. Crandall's rise ball can be effective, but not if you leave it low in the zone. You've got to be real careful with these Texas hitters. Stewart takes low, evens the count. Two balls, two strikes. Stewart a freshman. It's Mike White leaning heavily on some freshmen in this lineup. Got a huge number of returnees from last year. But still some freshmen are uh, key players for them. Well, five of their nine in the starting lineup right now are either freshmen or sophomores. So you think of the talent and the skill that Texas has and, and recruits and brings, but it's it's the uh, younger classmen, those underclassmen that are just making the difference. It's the full count pitch coming to Katie Stewart from Riley Crandall. Pops it up a mile high back behind the plate. It'll hit up on the net. Cuyazos came by, back and gave it a look, but it hit the netting. So we'll do it again at three balls, two strikes. With two down and nobody on, here comes the pitch from Riley Crandall. It is grounded to short, pylon. Fields fires and gets Stewart at first base, and that is the inning. Well, you got to think about what talent and skill she has if she's a freshman making that start among everybody else who was returning from this incredible team last year. So just throws the ball a little bit everywhere, but she kind of relies more on that rise ball than than anything else. But you gotta, Mike White has some respect for her if he's getting the start tonight. See her numbers 11 and 2 on the year, 1.85 ERA, 72 innings pitched, 73 strikeouts, only 16 walks. Really Impressive for the freshman. Here's the lineup she'll face. Glenn Moore has Emily Hott leading off, playing left field. Presley Pylon batting second, playing short. Shailen Govan in the designated player position tonight, batting third. Addy Flores at first base, batting cleanup. Sidney Cuyazos, the catcher, batting fifth. Taylor Strain in right, batting sixth. Leah Cran at third base, she'll bat seventh. Casey West at second base, batting eighth. Ashley Wachendorf. Ashlyn Wachendorf will play center field and bat ninth. Here's a hot shot grounded by Washington the backhand at second base and makes the play to retire Emily Hot. Well, Alyssa Washington, that senior, just making that play look easy. Hard hit, ball one hot, and she just backhands it. Makes a quick, quick throw to first. So one down, here's Presley Pylon to the plate. Changes defensively for UT. We'll give you those here in just a moment. Thank you, Chris. So defensively, some shifting around. It's Bella Dayton now in left field. Ashton Maloney is in right field. Reese Atwood is catching. It's Katie Stewart at first base and Mia Scott at third base. You got that? Uh, you scratch everything. I yeah. <laughs> yeah, hope you're using a pencil over there. <laughs> it is a pencil for that reason. There's some changes from uh, what we were given earlier. Pylon with a count of no balls, two strikes on her. 
Five, it's five. away. It's a ball and two strikes to Pylon. 222 average. And the junior from Marietta, California. And the LSU transfer. <laughs> Sounds familiar. Right, sounds like you. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like your path. Does nice. this one foul? She's got that 222 hitting batting average like you talked about, but I want to say like as of the last couple games, it, it's increased from there. I mean, she's really struggled at the beginning of this season, but has really found her spot, especially in this two hole right here. She's seen some good pitching and is making a difference. There is strike Nine. three by Pylon. Of course, she had to go and do that because I was talking about her. <laughs> Devon, the strikeout first of the night. Two down here in the Bears' half of the first inning. And inside there, could catch up with it. Also, it's like a screwball on that inside corner to a left-handed batter, which is an anomaly, but a good spin. Here's Shaylin Govan to the plate. Baylor's leading hitter on the season. Ran at 455, her average. Third best in the Big 12. Got a 586 on base percentage. That is tops in the Big 12. Really speaks to all those walks. 27 walks she's gotten. You know, you look at a hitter like that, you think a lot of those are intentional walks, but she just has a great eye. She's very disciplined in the box. Lines this one foul down the left field line. Of course, I would tend to believe that a lot of these opposing pitchers pitch with caution towards her. You would think that would be a wise move. <laughs> if I'm looking at somebody who's hitting 455, then I might. <laughs> She's not getting anything close. A lot of pop in that bat. Takes this one, and it is ball one. <laughs> Baylor coming off a weekend in which they took two or three from Texas Tech here at Gutterman Stadium. Jay was a little bit shaken up in game three on Sunday. Hit a double and then uh, sliding in at second base. Uh, just kind of an awkward slide. Ball two just misses inside. Kind of an awkward slide, twisted. We weren't sure her knee or her ankle. Did see her later with uh, ice on her knee. So she is available, could play in the field at first base tonight, but uh, starting out the game in the DP spot. You want to keep that bat in the lineup. For sure. And she is not one that is averse to playing her finishing last season just with the torn labrum. I mean, just nobody knew either. Just it never even affected her. Yeah, pretty amazing. She played through that at first base. <laughs> you got to, you know, stretch that arm, stretch that shoulder up a lot. It's hit hard, but foul. Staying alive, two balls, two strikes on Gouvan. I think the most impress impressive part of that is, is it never affected her swing either. I mean, she stayed in the lineup. And Right, a lot of people, uh, Baylor didn't make a big deal out of it, didn't publicize the fact she had the labrum injury. But uh, I think a lot of opponents, a lot of opposing coaches, never knew that she was hurt <laughs> last year. That says a lot about her. 2 2 count on Govan with two down, nobody on, bottom of the first. Baylor trailing two to nothing. There's ball three. Again, with those changes. Uh, now Reese Atwood behind the plate. This one's hit hard, foul again. Well, she is getting ahead of those pitches from Devine. Well, just making her pitch a lot too, giving her, her pitcher, Riley Crandall, a little bit of a break in there. So they're not going three up, three down, really fouling it off and extending these at bat, this at bat. Swap out the balls there, and we'll go again at three balls, two strikes to Shaylin Govan. Two down, nobody on. Bottom of the first inning. Yeah. 
Big swinging strike three. Devon stays after huge wins there. As Baylor went 5-0, wins over Oregon and UCLA and Missouri. It was a great start to the season early on. And a rough start playing some really good teams when they hit Big 12 play. Here's Jolie Mitchell, first pitch. High chopper to third. Glove there by Leah Cran, the throw. One pitch, one out to start the second inning. No defenses changes made here for Baylor. <laughs> it's a good thing. Texas uh, used up all the defensive changes. <laughs> all the dominoes, Phil. Yeah. And now is Caden Henry to the plate. Caden, the center fielder for the Longhorns. One of those freshmen you talked about. Lays down the bunt. It's a beauty. And she'll reach first base. Flores couldn't field it cleanly, charging in from first base. And Caden Henry is aboard with a one out bunt single. Well, just incredible speed that Caden Henry has. I mean, 18 of 21 stolen bases on the year. You knew once she got that bunt down, there was a very slim chance that she was going to be thrown out at first. Henry, the fresh, freshman from Dickinson. Here now is Alyssa Washington to the plate. Watch Henry at first base, definite threat to run. Top base stealer in the Big 12, as Telly said, 18 of 21 in steals. First pitch, ball one. Second delivery is lined into left field, a base hit. Alyssa Washington jumps on that one. Texas has two aboard with nobody out. I'm sorry, with one out to start the second inning. Just the aggressive attacks at the, in the box making the difference here. You don't see the frustration on Crandall's face, but you know that's got to be hard when you're pitching your heart out and everything is finding a way through. So with two on, here is Bella Dayton to the plate. Started the night as the first baseman, now the left fielder for <laughs> Texas. Wonder what she'll end up at the end of the yeah, inning. Yeah, we'll see. Bella Dayton, a senior from Wiley, Texas. Transfer from Arizona, future Big 12 member. Joe's Bunt pulls it back. Home plate umpire Christina Drum says that's a strike. One of the few seniors on this team, starting seniors. One ball, one strike. Here's in tight on the corners. One is low. Coyazos keeps the ball in front of her. Two balls and a strike to Dayton. Here's the pitch by Crandall. This one is fouled back into the net. It's two balls and two strikes. Texas in a stretch. These three games against Baylor. Baylor number 24 in the nation in one poll. Texas playing their eighth, ninth, and tenth straight games against a ranked opponent. That's the Big 12 for you. That's the Big 12. <laughs> How about that? Started with the series. Fly ball down the line in foul ground. Chased down by Emily Hot. So Hot covered some ground there. Makes the catch, and that's out number two in the second inning. Well, and just able to make that catch and knowing she can make that catch and getting that out to help Crandall even with the speed on Texas has on the bases right now. So two down back to the top of the order and Ashton Maloney. Maloney with the single. This one looped into left field. That's a base hit. The throw to the play. Not in time. Back to third. They'll get her at third base for the third out. But Texas puts another run on the board. The RBI single off the bat of Maloma last weekend propelled Texas to the top spot in the rankings this week. Texas also 26-0 on the season when they score first, which has happened tonight. <laughs> Two in the first, another run in the second. You can't argue with the stats. Let's hope you can change that, but you can't argue with the stats. 
Here's Abby Flores, Baylor first baseman, leads off the second inning. Bears retired in order by Tegan Kavan in the first inning. So in loop back of short, going back is Martinez to make the catch on the edge of the left field grass. Flores just getting jammed on that last pitch. Kavan not shying away from throwing hard inside. Just hit ball for Baylor so far was that uh, ground out by Hot to second base. As Washington made a nice play on that. Here's Sidney Collazos to the plate for Baylor. Baylor senior catcher, 258 on the year. Just the straight average really doesn't tell the contributions of Collazos, does it? No, just the leadership that she brings too. You can look at numbers all you want, but sometimes. The biggest impact player on your team is the person who does the communicating and talking, and she's able to do that from that catcher position. Throw the count, one down, nobody on. There's trailing three nothing to Texas in the second inning. Picked up there by Atwood behind the plate. It's ball three to Kuyazos. by Kavan, misses inside on four pitches. The walk, but it has a base runner with one down in the second inning. Goyazos met at first base on Megan Diaz in the first base coaching box for Baylor. There's Taylor strained to the plate, 312 average for the Baylor right fielder. Takes called, strike one. Taylor needs to find a way to take this leadoff walk here. Not leadoff walk, one out walk, and really do something with it. Strain turns on it, fouls it into the right-hand corner. Retrieve the ball, get it back in. It's no balls, two strikes on Strain. Collazos, the runner at first. Getting that first run across is can be hard sometimes. Add so much pressure when you're already down 3-0-2. You really need to find a way to get this one across. Five, open up the scoring and, and take some pressure off the pitcher. To the count on Taylor Strain. Pitch by Kavan. Swinging strike three. It's three strikeouts in an inning and two thirds by the freshman T in Kavan. Just that drop ball, which a lot of her pitching team is the one that relies on that drop ball. She's able to throw a little bit of everything. 73 strikes on the year, strikeouts on the year. It's more than anybody else on the roster. For a freshman coming in and joining a staff on which every pitcher returned from last year. <laughs> really impressive. This is Leah Cran, the Baylor freshman at the plate. And from Corpus Christi. She's averaging almost one strikeout in any pitch. Pretty impressive. And one pitch chases that one a little bit high out of the zone. It's about hey. two strikes to Cran. Two. Two down in the inning. Koyazos walked. She's the runner at first base. They were trailing early to top ranked Texas. Three to nothing. Pitch, just gets a piece of it. That's sawed her off. It's ball and two strikes. I got those returning pitchers for uh, for Texas. Sit Lolly Gutierrez is back. Stell check. Here's ball. Two. Mac Morgan is back. One. Add uh, Kavan to that. Really deep staff for Coach Mike White and the uh, Longhorns. 
This Texas team calls her the missing piece. But they, what they've been missing in the circle. Off speed, strike three. Back to back strike. Yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> just to think of all the wins in just 24 years. 900. He would say just 24 years? <laughs> <laughs> 1,039 overall for uh, Coach Moore, three years at LSU prior to Baylor. What a long and successful career it is. Mia Scott leads off the third inning for Texas. Had the two-run homer in the first inning. So you talk about 900 wins. And we know the last win was against this week, 2-1 win. Do you know when the first win was? Well, because you told me earlier. <laughs> you remember it, right? No, I was actually at LSU this oh, year. Okay. So his first year here, I was still at LSU. Okay. Um, but it was February 2nd of 2001. It was an 8-0 win against Texas A&M Corpus Christi. How about that? What th what's really cool, and I was telling a friend about this, is um, three starters on that team that game I played summer ball with. Ah. So Corpus Christi, LSU with Coach Moore, and uh, North Carolina were three schools I was looking at playing. Yeah. And so I could have very well been on that Corpus Christi wow. team. Huh. Instead, I was in Baton Rouge. Actually, we were in Las Vegas. Um, of course we, you were. <laughs> we started the season with a big tournament, like the Mary Nutter Classic. It, there's a huge tournament in Las Vegas, and we started our season against, uh, I think they were number two in the nation at the time, was Washington. Wow. 3 2 count on Mia Scott. Riley Crandall rocks and fires, hit right up the middle into center field, a base hit. Mia Scott, two for two to start this game. A home run in the first, a single to start the third. When you look at just numbers alone for Mia Scott, I mean, she's definitely capable of the long ball. We saw that, but uh, hitting in that two spot, hitting 376 on the year, she has four stolen bases. She's got a ton of speed. But overall, she's stolen almost 50 bases in her time at Texas. Yeah, sitting at 49 right now, career stolen bases for Mia Scott. If you look at those numbers alone, I'm thinking she's a lefty slapper who's got good speed. Not somebody who can hit a two-run bomb off the scoreboard. Martinez hits it hard but foul. Texas team very aggressive at the plate. I'd say they're playing with a lot of confidence right now also. Yeah, they definitely got some motivation going for them. They believe in themselves, and that makes all the difference when you come to a team. And one pitch coming from Crandall. That is a called strike two. You can't just wish it to happen either, and I know this team has big success of I mean, World Series for sure, but they probably want a national championship. They want to show them who the best team in the Red River rivalry is. Martinez, the sophomore from Arizona, pops it up. Shallow left going back as Pylon makes a nice play. That angle, she's looking back into the setting sun here in Waco. So uh, nice job, Pylon. Makes for out number one in the third. Definitely peeks through the, the covering and the facade right there at this time of day. Left field and shortstop, it's a difficult position to play. Scott aborted first, here is Reese Atwood to the plate. Grounder to short, Pylon charges the throw in time to get Atwood at first base. Pylon's been very busy at that shortstop. Not just today either. I feel like she's been that steady, steady rock all year. Two down in the inning. Scott now aboard at second base. Here is Katie Stewart, first baseman. And the pitch is up high, ball one to Stewart, who grounded to short her first time up tonight. <laughs> Crandall delivers. That is ball two to Stewart. So a 2 0 count to Stewart with two down and a runner at second. 
Pitch is over a leaping pylon into left field. Coming around from second to score is Mia Scott. And Texas has now scored in each of the first three innings. They've got a 4-0 lead on Baylor. Pylon did everything possible to try and keep that ball in the infield. And ultimately just could not get high enough. I think she timed her <laughs> jump perfectly. It was. Still too well hit and too high over her head. So two in the first, one in the second, one in the third for Texas. And still going, Stewart at first. Here is the designated player, Jolie Mitchell. We featured Jolie in uh, our pregame setup to the game, and you made the point. A little strange to see her at third base. Lo and behold, that was the initial lineup we were given, but by the time they took the field, it wasn't. <laughs> Jolie Mitchell at third base. It was the more uh, familiar Mia Scott at third. Jolie in the DP role. I know there's a lot you can do with the flex position and the DP position, but there was probably six. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Called strike. It's a ball and two strikes to Jolie Mitchell, who granted the third, her first time up tonight. Texas has stepped off the bus, swinging the bat, a 4 0 lead over Baylor. We're in the top of the third inning. It's by Crandall. Get into center field, Wackendorf. Comes in, Andy makes work. the catch, and that is the go. inning. But a run on at 32 and 6 and ranked number one in the nation as this, season, this series begins. You can tell they're definitely on a mission. Like they've got a goal. They're not playing down to it. This is Casey West that leads off the third inning for the Bears. Fly ball into center field. Caden Henry is there and makes the catch. That is out number one in the third inning. That rise ball for Kavana has just been effective tonight against these Baylor hitters. They can't seem to lay off of it. They're not hitting it solid. When you have a rise ball pitcher, that ball can, you're susceptible to the long ball. That ball can go far. There's Ashlyn Wackendorf to the plate. Baylor center fielder. First pitch strike one to Wackendorf. 387 batting average on the year for the Lorena High School product. Wackendorf a junior. Pitch by Kavan. Swinging. Strike two by Wackendorf. They're still looking for their first hit tonight. They've had one base runner. Coyazos with the one out walk in the second. The pitch, foul back, Wackendorf stays alive. Kelly, what a great crowd here tonight. Uh, this game's been sold out for several days ahead of the game. There's a lot of burnt orange in the stands, but uh, certainly Baylor fans have turned out for this one home game in Waco of this series this year. There are not a lot of empty seats. And in the left center field. Dayton moves over, makes the catch, and that is out number two. Well, you got to figure that if you're the number one team in the nation and you only live 100 miles south of here, you'd want to come support your team. <laughs> now that shot right there, that's on the first base side. That makes it look like it's all Texas <laughs> You know? It's not that way. There are a bunch, but uh, and there, most of them are situated on the first base side behind the Texas dugout. Out of the order, Emily Hot to the plate. Stung the ball her first time up, but uh, nice play backhanded by Alyssa Washington, the second baseman. This one on the line in the left field. That'll get past Del Delton all the way to the wall. Here's Hot around second. She's headed for third. She will slide in with a two-out triple, the first hit of the night for the Bears. Well, Hot just being diligent enough to take that outside pitch and hit it where it's pitched. Not trying to do too much with it. Keeps her head down and takes advantage of that misplay. Trying, Dayton, to, yeah. Yeah, trying to save the no-hitter there. Laid out trying to make that catch when it got by her. It was going to go all the way to the wall, and it did. 
We'll see if Baylor can pick up a run here. Here's a looper into left field. That is a catch by Dayton. That time she came in a slot. We're back at Ketterman Stadium. Baylor trailing Texas 4-0, joined by Baylor head coach Glenn Moore. And Glenn, we said Texas uh, got off the bus swinging the bat tonight. Yeah, they did. They're a great team, and you expect them to do that, and you just gotta, can't make the mistakes we've made already. Um, you know, I think we've made some adjustment offensively, and we're going to have to do that, swing early in the count. See, she's not uh, not waiting uh, very long to come after us, so we've got to be ready to hit. Well, your team always comes out to compete, Coach, and just want to say congratulations on 900 wins. Thank you. I appreciate it. You got a few of those for me. <laughs> just a couple. <laughs> thanks, guys. Glenn, thanks very much. He's going back to work. Glenn Moore, Baylor head coach. Picked up career win number 900. Last game out for Baylor Tuesday night on the road at UT San Antonio. It's a bunch of wins. Think about that. Well, 900 wins is pretty impressive, but I mean, it stinks he doesn't do it at home in front of the home crowd, I too. I know. So that would have been great. I'm glad we get to celebrate <laughs> here again with a, a sellout crowd. That's right. Here's an infield grounder by the speedy Caden Henry and just a routine play and she beats it out easily at first base. So Caden Henry is two for two on the night, a bunt single her first time up and an infield single here to start the fourth inning. Definitely miss hits that, gets in on the hands and she's just so fast. She has got the speed. Watch her on the base pads now as Alyssa Washington comes to the plate. Washington, a single to the left her first time up. One of eight hits the Longhorns have on the board. Four runs to show for it. They've scored at least a run in every inning so far. Pitch by Riley Crandall. Runner is going. Throw down. She's safe. A bad play there, but Henry now 19 of 22 in stolen base attempts this year. She's the Big 12 leader in steals. You told her, told us watch her on the base path. It's not breaking news <laughs> with her, is it? <laughs> so a stolen base has her in scoring position. 2-0 count on Washington. Pulls the bat back. Ball three to Alyssa Washington. Rio the count, nobody out. Henry the runner at second base. Here comes the pitch by Crandall. That is ball four. First two have reached base for Texas to start the fourth. Four straight pitches right there by Crandall too. Crandall, for the most part, not prone to uh, to give up a lot of free passes. 28 and a third innings coming into the game. 83 strikeouts, fourth most in the Big 12. There's a bunt, dead right in front of the plate. Goyazos to first. They, uh, oh, she's safe at first base. Well, I thought they had her, da uh, Bella Dayton. See if this one might be reviewed. And Moore's going to go out. He wants to talk to Lara King, the first base umpire. So as it stands, that will go down as a bunt single, and the bases are loaded for Texas with nobody out here in the four weights. Here come our umpires. She is out at first base. So a good use of the review. Dayton erased from the base pads, out number one in the fourth inning. There you go. Right right number one. So it works like a sacrifice. Gets uh, Peyton Henry to third base, Alyssa Washington to second. One down in the order, back to the top of the order. Or I'm sorry, this is Bella Dayton at the plate. Nope, it's not. It's Ashton Maloney at the plate. There go. They changed the scoreboard now. <laughs> Maloney uh, off to a two-for-two two start to this game. Single to center to start. Scored ahead of the Mia Scott home run. Single to left in the second inning. 
Infield is in. Chopper to short. Pylon's coming home. The play at the plate. She is out at home plate. Pylon to Koyazos. The tag at home plate. Now Mike White asked for a replay of that. Ruling is out at home plate. So the call stands. Koyazos at Look of vindication on her face. <laughs> she says, I told you that. So a nice defensive play by Baylor. Chopper to pylon. Did not hesitate a bit before she made the throw to home plate. Christina Drum at home plate now wipes off the plate like there was some evidence there that they didn't want to <laughs> disturb before the ruling was made. So two down in the inning. Runners on the corners now, and here is Mia Scott to the plate. He's got a two-run homer, a bomb to center field in the first inning. A single that started the third. She scored two of the four runs for Texas. Pitch by Crandall. That is just low. Ball two, two and zero oh the count. Two down in the inning now. Runners on the corners. Randall delivers to Scott. This one into center field. A base hit. Scoring from third is Alyssa Washington. Round in third. Headed home. Another play at the plate. And there is a collision. And they say she is safe at home play. Wow. Throw got there well ahead of the runner to the plate. Goyazos took the contact there. And then ruled safe at the plate by Christina Drum. I go back to say that throw's being made into it. Mike Glenn making his case. The umpires will get together again. Have a look at it. This one up the line a bit. Koyazos taking the throw, the relay pylon. Now the only thing here is I, I don't know where Koyazos is set up to begin with. But that throw was obviously coming down the line, so she moves over for that. No signal yet. Christina Drum will go straight to Mike White. And it's an out. Right. So on the review, again, in stadium, uh, fortuitous timing as we get to visit now with Mike White, the uh, six-year head coach at Texas. Uh, kind of a wild inning there, coach, with three reviews in that half inning. That's the, that's the thing about review now. It really helps take uh, take care of those close plays. Sure. How, from your spot in the third base coaching box, how did you see that last play? Um, I, I thought the catch was in the way, but, you know, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, we, uh, you know, the, the run, if the throw takes the runner into, I mean, the catcher into the path of the runner, then it's okay, and that's what they saw. So, yeah, that, that's it. Well, your team just seems to be firing on all cylinders at a good point in the season, too. You guys are looking good. Yeah, we got to keep it going, that's for sure. There's a lot of softball ahead of us, though. Well, good luck to you, Coach. Thank you so much. Welcome. It's Mike White visiting with us between innings. Texas with a 5-0 lead on Baylor. Horns continue to have scored at least one run in every inning tonight. Two of the first single runs in the second, third, and fourth. Bears looking to plate their first run tonight. Shaylen Govan hopes to get things started for Baylor. Next. Tegan Kavan, we didn't even have a chance to ask Coach White about this freshman <laughs> pitcher. Oh my gosh, who is, so uh, many questions we yeah, can ask him. Pitching really well, giving up the one hit so far tonight. Kavan struck out, battled Kavan in the first inning, ended with a strikeout that ended the first. That was one of four strikeouts so far this evening by Tegan Kavan. Freshman right-hander for Texas. She's from West Des Moines, Iowa. How many uh, pitchers you see are from, or, you know, standout pitchers 
from Iowa on this Texas team. It's ball four, four straight pitches. Govan draws the walk. It's free pass number 28 on the year by Govan. That uh, certainly helps her on base percentage. And Rowett will run for her at first base. He's, you often see that Chalen Govan gets on base, especially at, at first base with that high on base percentage. And you see Carolyn Rowett come in and pinch run. She kind of wish that she had that on base percentage. <laughs> and she's putting in the <laughs> it's exactly right. The footwork there. Brings up Abby Flores to the plate. Flores 0 for 1, popped to short her first time up. First time tonight, Baylor has had their leadoff hitter on base in an inning against Kavan. Out, out of play down the left field line. No balls, two strikes to Flores. 286 hitter on the year for Flores. Playing first base tonight with Shailen Govan in that DP role. A great crowd here tonight, and Baylor fans just looking for something to get on their feet about. Uh, biggest roar from the Baylor fans has been the overturning of a couple of reviewed plays. It was the triple by Emily Hyde in the third. And hit in the air to center field. Coming on to make the catch is Caden Henry. And that is out number one in the fourth inning. Again, just susceptible to that rise ball. Getting underneath it, just weak pop-ups. Talk about wanting to make a difference in that bats and adjustments. Coach Moore spoke a little bit about that. You really gotta either lay off that rise ball or find a different way to hit it. Stay on top. Here is Koyazos to the plate. A pair of pants, right? <laughs> For Koyazos. First pitch ball one to her. She walked her first time up. It is hit well, but well foul down the left field line. Probably a bandage or two underneath there, too. <laughs> underneath that's those right. new pants. Shout out to the softball managers who uh, made a quick change there with Koyazos. Switching balls again. 1-1 one, one the count on Koyazos. Rowett, the pinch runner at first base. They were trailing 5 to nothing, batting in the bottom of the fourth inning. In one of this three-game series versus top-ranked Texas. Pitch just off the plate, ball two. Two balls and a strike to Koyazos. Chase that one, swinging strike two. Snap throw down to first base. Rowett is back safely. Count evens at two balls, two strikes on Cuyazos. And the pitch off speed, chasing it. Can't catch up with it. Strikeout number five on the night by Tegan Devon. That rise ball and that changeup has stumped these Baylor hitters tonight. She throws it perfectly right there, too. Five strikeouts, two walks given by Kavan. Here is Taylor Strain to the plate. This pitch bat fouls it back. Taylor swept this series over Texas a year ago. It's a Friday night game in Austin, two games in Waco. Time Baylor had swept Texas in softball since 2018. It's a wild series. Strain tries to bunt, pushes it back foul. 9 1 win, a run rule win by Baylor on Friday night in, in Austin. Austin. Yeah. 5 2 win by the Bears, uh, the Saturday game, the middle game back in Waco. Then a walk off 2 1 win by Baylor on Sunday. Remember the crazy play, uh, Zadie LaValle, the hit, mm. hit the first base bag. And Baylor got a 
couple of runs. In a long time series in softball, but in all sports between Baylor and Texas that uh, unfortunately in some ways will come to an end with Texas leaving the Big 12 Conference after this season. I hate to see it, number one. Uh, just so many, so many memories, Baylor versus Texas through the years, softball, but other sports also. You know, to be honest, it, it was always, when Baylor beat Texas, it was a big win. That's, big yeah, win. that's a credit for te to Texas. Viviana Martinez with the leadoff double to start the fifth inning. Rolls all the way to the wall in right center field. Hit number 10 on the night, double digit hits for the Longhorns. Well, you can just see her speed. I mean, a great piece of hitting when that ball gets through, but it's her speed that picks up. And I mean, the way she's moving, she almost got to third base. Here's the catcher, Reese Atwood at the plate. Atwood 0 for 2 so far tonight. Atwood has 12 home runs on the season. <laughs> Baylor as a team has 13. Wow. Texas as a team has 44 long balls this year. One won the count on Atwood. Definitely a different approach to the game. Definitely. One one pitch by Crandall. That is hit foul on a spin on that ball. Rolls foul at the first baseline. I think some sports, uh, Baylor and Texas, may continue to play each other, non-conference games. Uh, makes sense Makes sense for softball. Yeah. It makes sense for baseball. Maybe even some basketball games. Uh, Rodney Terry down there. Scott Drew. Thank the Lord. Still the coach here at Baylor. <laughs> it's been a wild week in that respect. <laughs> Can I get an amen? <laughs> But those, some of those games, maybe even women's basketball, may continue as non-conference games. I mean, you have the, the games in your schedule, and you have the freedom with some of those non-conference games, as you said. And they're not far. One, two pitch outside. It's two balls, two strikes. Although, however many years ago, I kind of thought the same thing with A&M. Right. <laughs> Being even closer. Very rarely do you see that. 2-2 two, two the count to Atwood. Here's the pitch. Nice stop by Coyazos behind the plate. It's three balls, two strikes. Nobody out. Runner at second is Viviana Martinez. Led off this fifth inning with a double into right center. Here's the pitch. Fouled back. Remains three balls, two strikes. What do you remember from your playing days? Any particular memories of games versus Texas? Well, Texas had this little pitcher called Cat Osterman. <laughs> <laughs> that's, Say no what more. I, that's what I remember. Say no more. <laughs> I do remember one time. I'll hold that thought. <laughs> hold that thought. Fly ball shallow right field. Taylor Strain comes in and makes the catch. That'll retire Atwood. That's out number one here in the fifth. You didn't see a whole lot of big game wins when you had a pitcher of that caliber. But there was uh, my senior year, we actually knocked out A&M and Texas out of Big 12 tournament. Um, oh, I remember that. Yeah. That was huge. It was huge. Yeah. That was probably one of the highlights of my career. What year was that? Uh, it would have been 2004. Nice. I remember that because it was so big. Katie Stewart at the plate, one for two on the night. One and of the ten hits by Texas. Yeah, ended up going into the semifinal round at the Big 12 tournament. Might have been one of the furthest times Baylor's ever gone in the tournament. It was pretty fun. Which is low and away. Evens account at a ball and a strike. Matt Osterman, if you uh, follow this series down to Austin the next couple of days, you'll probably see Cat doing some television. 
of Baylor in Texas. Bounded wide of third base. Osterman, a member of the Texas Sports Hall of Fame, just up the street from us here in Waco. As she should be. A very deserving <laughs> member. She was uh, definitely a challenge to face. Just remember certain at bats against her. <laughs> you, you, you remember the at bats where you're like, hey, I actually won one. <laughs> you kind of tend to forget the other <laughs> 20, 30, 40 that you sat down on her. Good high and long, but foul off the bat of Stewart. Remains ball and two strikes. Got her great Texas career, but then uh, her Olympic mm -hmm. success also. Ball and two strikes to Katie Stewart. Martinez, the runner at second. What I'm going to say, too, when we played Texas, it wasn't on the weekend like this. It, we split it. Um, our Big 12 games, we only played two instead of a three-game series. Okay. And so we would play, it was our Tuesday night or Wednesday night game. We would split with A&M, we'd split with um, Texas, and we'd split sometimes with Oklahoma. Mm. Which it's a totally different approach because you don't get the same three-game homestand where you kind of worry about pitching, back-to-back, -back, possible doubleheader if there's weather. Like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's weeks apart. Pitch outside brings up a full count to Katie Stewart. Three balls, two strikes. Here comes the full count pitch from Crandall. Swinging strike three. Stewart goes down swinging with the second out here in the fifth inning. That's just a big pitch right there. Took the risk with the rise ball with the, with the runner in scoring position, but just got so much spin on it. Jumps right over that bat. That is the first strikeout tonight by Riley Crandall. It's a big one, second out in the fifth inning. Martinez remains at second. Here is Jolie Mitchell to the plate. Mitchell is 0 for 2 tonight. A ground out to third and a pop to shallow center field. Handle misses outside. It's a ball and a strike. Handle trying to get out of an inning without giving up a run for the first time tonight. Texas has scored in every inning so far. 5-0 lead. And 5-0 lead includes two plays Place at the, the plate, plate overturned. This is in the center field. Going back is Wachendorf, and she makes the catch at the edge of the grass. Long fly off the bat of Mitchell Horns. Well, Baylor starting this fifth inning. Seven, eight, nine hitters. To start, Leah Cran leads off. Devon very efficient. It's pitch number 62 right there in the fifth inning. And these are just the second at bats for these hitters in the bottom of the lineup. So just now going through the lineup for the second time in the fifth inning. It's been a great performance. Iowa freshman. Three and the count to Cran. Remember, she started the last inning on a four pitch walk to uh, Shaylin Govan. Taking on 3-0, that's called strike one. At this point, Baylor has had three base runners tonight, two via the walk, the one hit for the Bears, the triple, two-out triple by Emily Hott in the third. And strike two, it's now a full count to Cran. We were talking about this during the break, but there's not a lot of Big 12 teams that do the home-and-home -home split like this. I don't know of any others. Do you think Oklahoma and Oklahoma State might do that? I think they did the neutral home split. Right, right. Which, if we're going to be honest, Oklahoma City is pretty much Norman anyways. <laughs> Not so neutral? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, it's a bit unique, and uh, to me, one of the benefits of having teams in your conference that are close, easy enough to drive to. Mm -hmm. 
And those are getting ooh, inside, brushes her back, and that's ball four. For two in innings in a row, Gabon walks the leadoff hitter for the Bears. Here it's Leah Cram. You see her smiling, that ball just got a little bit away. Brings up Casey West, fly to center. Her only previous at bat. Joe's bunt, all strike one to West. 78 her average as she steps in here in the fifth inning. But again, that one goes by outside. This is charging on the corners. Bella Dayton in left field comes all the way in to uh, third base. And the third baseman, Mia Scott, charges. Here's the 1-1. High ball two, snap throw down to first base. Bringing his back safe. Taking that huge lead over there at first. Here's the 2 1. That was a high ball three. Oh, he's just been on fire all night, with the exception of that one walk at the beginning of the last inning. Kind of showing a little. Taking, and that is ball four, so back to back walks. First inning tonight, Baylor has had two base runners on in the same inning. I'm getting kind of tough here. Kind of calmer down. Really hot. First pitch, strike one to hot. One for two this evening. Really goes to show you just when you rely on your defense. I mean, let, let him hit the ball. Uh, get they out, and she's pitching a totally different pitcher right here. Ahead in the count here, no balls, two strikes. The 0 2, that is fouled back. Hot stays alive. Casey West, the runner at second base. Wackendorf, the runner at first for the Bears. Trying to scratch through, get on the board against Tegan Kavan. Baylor trailing five to nothing. That is close. And it's ball one. Ball on two strikes. Denied by Hot to take that one. But I am great framing there by Outward trying to get that call. It looked good from up here. One two is fouled back. It stays one ball, two strikes. Looking for something to get on their feet about. See if Hot can make that happen. Hit into right field. Being held at third base is Casey West. Emily Hot, her second hit tonight, loads the bases for Baylor in the fifth inning. We talk about her hot bat. She has just been the offensive production for this team. Her and Jalen Govan just doing it from that leadoff spot. Here's Presley Pylon to the plate. Struck out in the first, lined out to left field. A great sliding catch by Bella Dayton in left field that ended the third inning. Get the Bears from getting a run home. Emily Hott, who was at third base. That's here with one out and the base is loaded. The pitch popped up right side of the infield. That is out number two. Good job, team. Good two job, down team. in the inning with the bases laid. They were needing some ex ex execution right there and just not getting it. You know, all the things that you can do to put that ball in play with bases loaded, that's 
you know, sometimes you don't have control over it, but a pop-up, easy pop-up to the second base on an infield fly. Uh, not what you need. You need a ground ball somewhere, a, a bunt to make something happen. Here's Shaylin Govan to the plate. Govan is 0 for 1, a strikeout and a walk. First pitch is inside ball one. Base is loaded for Baylor. Pitch outside, ball two to Govan. Govan with the good eye, walked earlier. Leads the team with uh, 28 walks on the year. Nowhere to put it right now. A serious scoring inning of the night for the Bears. They had not had two runners on together prior to this inning. A couple of walks started it off. A single to right by Emily Hot loaded the bases. Now two down here in the fifth. Baylor trailing 5 nothing. Pitch. It's a called strike. It's two balls and a strike. Van 449 her average as of this plate appearance. That is down low, ball three. Three and one count now to Shaylin Govan. Now Kavan has to come in. No place to put her. Here's the 3-1. That is off the plate. Ball full line and walks in a run. Third walk of the inning, and the Bears get their first run of the night. Casey West touches home plate. It's 5-1. Takes his lead up to four. What do you think of the lesser of two evils right there? Do you like your leading hitter with a 455 batting average swing, or do you just give up one run when you've got four to spare? That's a really good point. You got to pitch carefully to Shaylin Govan. The run home base is still loaded. There are two outs in the inning as Abby Flores steps in. Flores 0 for 2 tonight, but she's been swinging a hot bat. Ooh. Really? Outer, outer part of the plate, called strike two. I mean, she's really been stifled tonight. She's one of those that chases that rise ball and, and hits that weak plus fly. So she's got to make an adjustment at this hot bat. And watching a pitch like that last one go by, it's really hard to watch. If you know that rise ball is your weakness and that's what you've gone down on, you've got to jump on something lower close to the zone like that. Especially if runners in scoring position. Ball and two strikes. Fouls it away down the left field line out of play. Labors has had some games over the course of this season where they really were missing the timely hit. Mm -hmm. This would be a spot for a timely hit right now, trailing five to one, with the bases loaded and two down. On this late in the game, too, you've got to be putting some runs across the board. Pitch by Kavon, way outside. It's two balls, two strikes. Markendorf runs at third, hot at second. Levan, the runner at first. Here's the pitch. This is hit into left field. Moving over, making the catch is Bella Dayton, and that is the inning. There's Texas game. Now I know you guys had no control over this part, but two of the three umpires are female too. I mean, <laughs> That's right. <come> on. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Kelly, I would offer for you to do play-by-play -play for an inning if you would like. <laughs> I think you're good. I'll go down and visit with Gary Rhodes. He's <laughs> sitting down there. Is it with Miss Sue down there? That there would be go. fun. So Miss Getterman in the house. Yep. All right, we go to the sixth inning. 5-1 Texas. New pitcher on for Baylor. Casey West enters the circle. Five innings. Pitch to start tonight by Riley Crandall. Now gives way to Casey West. Pitches up high. It's two balls and a strike. Casey the junior from Liberty, Liberty High School. Her number's on the year. This is her 15th appearance, 3-1 record, 2.94 ERA. 
She also has three saves on the year. 31 innings pitched. Well, look, looks like she's uh, pitching into uh, Xavier LaValle now also. All right, so another change. LaValle behind the plate. There is Casey West. Who's the hero at the plate for the Bears in that win over Texas Tech over the weekend. Mm -hmm. She's such a competitor. I mean, we see her at start, starting at second base tonight, moving into the pitching circle. We've seen her play some outfield. She does whatever she needs. Last year, really pitching well against Oklahoma. First player in Baylor history to throw a perfect game. I mean, so she's she can do it all. How about that? That says a lot, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. This is Caden Henry at the plate, leading off for Texas. She is two for two on the night. Hadn't got the ball out of the infield, but. She's two for two with a bunt single and then a single to the right side of the infield. 3-2 count on her. West delivers. That didn't miss by much, but it's ball four. And Texas has their leadoff hitter aboard to start the sixth. Well, a leadoff walk, but then a leadoff walk to the speed of Gaden Henry. Right. Had a stolen base last time she was on base. And defensive switch for the Bears. It's like Collazos was playing some second base, and they put Cran back at second and moved Collazos, which we've seen her play third base. Exactly. Playing second was a new spot for her. <laughs> but when you get somebody like the speed of Henry on there, you probably need somebody who played a little bit more second base than that. You've got a possible bunt. You've got a steal. You've got coverage. A lot of moving parts. Alyssa Washington hits it high and deep, but foul. Out of the ballpark, way out of the park, foul down the left field line. Wow, she crushed that ball. It's a long strike, John. A long, loud strike <laughs> is what it is. Washington, the senior from Abilene, one of only two senior starters for Texas tonight. Pitch by West. Off the mitt of LaValle to the backstop. Henry moves on to second base. Two seniors in the field. they got three seniors in their lineup. Thank you for that. So a runner at second base now. 1-1 one, one count on Washington. Washington's one for one with a walk and a run score. Valley stabs that one. It's two balls and a strike. And how about this, John? The two seniors they have in the field, one's from Wiley and one's from Abilene. <laughs> how about that? <laughs> and then you have Jolie Mitchell, who was, who's in the lineup also. Two-one pitch, swinging strike two. Count evens, two balls, two strikes on Washington. With Henry, the runner, at second base. Just off the plate, ball three. Govan now in the field at first base. She had been the designated player for Baylor. The infield has uh, changed around completely, except for Pylon at shortstop. Three two pitch coming to Alyssa Washington. Got to play the other way down the right field line. Got to strain out there in right field. Looks like it. Got to check, make sure, right? <laughs> There's Shago Van. She's in the field at first base. You never know at this point in the game. True. Grant at second base, pylon at short. Sydney Collazos at third. 3-2, fouled away again by Washington. Reload of softballs for our home plate umpire, Christina Drum. Washington waits.
Henry ready to go at second base. Here's the pitch by West. Out away again by Washington. She's getting her money's worth. She's making Casey West work. <laughs> Casey West already throwing 16 pitches on this inning. <laughs> this is the only inning she's pitched. And nine pitches to Washington. Pitch grounded, slow roller to short. Pyline won't get the out. Boy, just that slow roller, Washington good speed. Nothing more you can do with that. Texas has runners on the corners with nobody out. Here in the sixth inning. We talked about that, that slow, slow roller. She's a full swing on it, but just the speed of Washington she has. Highland did everything possible she could. That's a hit, the 11th of the night for Texas, second of the night for Washington. There's Bella Dayton to the plate. That's with nobody out and runners on the corners. Tries to bunt, pushes it back foul. They're charging from the corners. Dayton waits in the left-hand batter's box. Shows bunt again. Runner is going. They don't throw down. So Washington moves on to second base. You can't make that throw down there <laughs> if you've got Caden Henry at third base. Wow. So two in scoring position for Texas now. Runners at second and third with nobody out. Count is one and one on Dayton. Stands in the very back of the batter's box on the left-hand side. That is a called strike two. Well, you mentioned it. Casey West is a competitor. She will go after you. <laughs> uh, she's fearless. She'll step up and do whatever you need. Skips past LaValle. Coming home from third is Henry, and she's safe. Henry scores from third base as the ball gets past Zadie LaValle at home plate. See if they rule that a pass ball or a wild pitch. Texas has their sixth run of the night on the board. It's a 6-1 Texas lead. Well, you know speed just makes a whole difference in this game, but you forget about the little parts like that, like a pass ball. That ball was thrown hard and came back. Rick shade back pretty quick, but Henry is just so fast. There's a grounder, Cran dives, keeps it in the infield, but it bounces off her glove. That'll get Washington home from third. It's an infield hit by Dayton, and another run for the Longhorns, and a 7-1 lead here in the sixth inning. And still no outs to just a the onslaught of Texas right now. Getting on top of that rise ball, hitting it hard. Two runs home, as Kelly said, nobody out. Back to the top of the order, and Ashton Maloney for Texas. Through the box, into center field. A hit parade for Texas. Walking three singles so far for UT. Nobody out in the sixth inning. That's where you, in this position, you need the senior leadership of Sydney Collazos behind the plate. Call time, go talk to Casey. Calm her down a little bit. Just buy a little time instead of hit after hit. The hit parade, like you said. She's getting ambushed on all sides. So you just got to take some time. Slow the game down. Here's Mia Scott. Fly ball to left field. Emily Hot makes the catch there. And that is the first out here in the top of the sixth. That strain left to right in the outfield. Collazos at third base. Pylon at short. Cran at second base, Shayla Govan at first, and Zadie LaValle catching. So one down with two on. Here's Viviana Martinez. 
Hit into right field. Strain comes up throwing. And that'll hold the runner at third base. Good job by Strain to come up and fire it to home plate. Yeah, great job by Strain. And chase her back to the bag. There's nowhere for her to go. Fourteen hits on the night by Texas for this inning, all singles. Here is Reese Atwood. 7-1 lead for Texas with the bases loaded and one out. Atwood, the top run producer in the Big 12 Conference with 53 RBIs coming into the game tonight. She is 0 for 3 this evening. Grounded under the glove of Pylon into center field. One run scores, two runs score. Throw back to second base. Two runs single off the bat of Reese Atwood for a 9-1 lead for Texas in the sixth inning. And that is just a rare sight right there by Presley Pylon, that ball getting underneath her glove. Usually she is a vacuum everywhere on that side of the field. Gone in a little bit, made it that much tougher. 9-1 lead for the Longhorns. Mike White approaches home plate, maybe putting a pinch hitter in here. Pinch runner at first base. Pinch runner it is. So the runner at uh, first base for Texas is now Adeo Wallace. Freshman out of Plano, Plano West High School. It's just a few kids at that high school. <laughs> <laughs> right. And the batter is Katie Stewart, eighth player to bat this inning for Texas. Put four runs on the board, still going with one out and two aboard. Katie Stewart, one for three tonight. RBI single back in the third. And skips well in front of the plate. It's five to one when this inning started. Now that's ballooned to a nine one Texas lead here in the sixth. Under to short pylon, the throw. That'll retire Stewart with the second out here in the sixth inning. Two base runners advance. But two down in the inning. Here is Jolie Mitchell to the plate. As Texas has batted around in the sixth. Mitchell 0 for 3 this evening. First time to face Casey West. And the first pitch is up high, ball one. Pitch down low, it's two balls and a strike. West just still battling through this inning. Not giving up, throwing 31 pitches. They scored a bunch of runs on her, four runs on her so far, but she has just not stopped. She's still trying her best. Rounder, Pylon has it, turns, throws. Wide of home plate, two runs will score. So a grounder that she gloves. Batted around in the inning. Caden Henry, the next scheduled hitter. And it's not Henner, uh, Henry. It'll be a pinch hitter coming up. Katie Simmons will come to the plate. Simmons, her first at bat tonight. Last name C I M U S Z. She was a standout hitter for the Soko, or this uh, Texas Longhorn team last year. She made a name for herself for sure. People knew it was Simmons. Comes in with a 359 average. Pinch hitting with Texas up by 10 in the sixth inning. Pitch 
pitch by West. She couldn't hold up. That's a strike. Two balls and a strike to Simmons. West just a completely different look from Riley Crandall. I mean, Simmons didn't have it that bad against her, but it's hard to hold up sometimes. Pitch up high for ball three. Six hits and a walk this inning by Texas to score the six runs. Got 11 runs on the board now, 16 hits by UT. Two by Baylor. There is the second walk of the inning. Caden. Caden. Melissa Washington is He's putting you back in. due up next, and she is going to the plate. Caden Henry will re-enter the game. So she is now aboard at first base. Do you blame him? I know. He has 11 to 1, though. Yep. So Caden Henry, there she is, the runner at first base. Two down, Washington at the plate. West delivers. That's strike one. Texas started this game scoring and just kept pouring it on. First two hitters tonight against Riley Crandall. A single by Maloney. Then a two-run homer by Mia Scott, second batter of the game. Just that quickly, a 2-0 lead for Texas. They've scored in every inning but the fifth. Really opened things up. Casey West in the circle here in the sixth inning. And making up for that fifth inning right here. <laughs> That's right. More than making up for it. Two on the count to Washington. It's two for two with a walk. Two runs scored. Misses ball three. Three and one now to Washington. And here's the pitch. That is hit a long way, but foul. Over the wall, foul down the left field line. Can't trust that. Keep that approach out over. Jeez, trust he's having that. fun up there now. Big swings. You can do that when you're up 11 to 1 <laughs> in the sixth, right? You can do that too when you just have the confidence and you have the gap and, you know. It's just a freedom when you're playing. Yeah, you mentioned confidence. This is a Texas team playing with a lot of confidence. You can feel it coming off the uh, series win over Oklahoma last weekend in Austin. Won two of three there. That first win in the series on Saturday snapped a 40-game conference winning streak by mm -hmm. OU. 40 games. <laughs> Texas took the series over the Sooners for the first time since 2009. 3-2 pitch. Sliced foul out of play. Right field line. Do it again at three balls, two strikes. Well, just Texas, their offense has just been on display tonight. You've seen power. You've seen speed. You've seen contact. You've made adjustments in the box. And... You can see why they took two from Oklahoma last weekend. Yeah, exactly. Good. That is ball four. Well, and don't discount what Tegan Kavon has done in the circle. Get this final out in the sixth inning. She'll face Bella Dayton at the plate. Bella Dayton is 0 for 1. Sacrifice bunt and a single on a run scored. Six runs, sixth inning for Texas. Pitches away, it's ball two. A 
Vanol, the junior, the transfer from Iowa Western Community College. It's two Iowa pitchers we How have in the circle tonight. And you were saying, <laughs> it's kind of rare to see in a picture from Iowa. Well, the game has changed so much, too. It's not only just a Southern California, Florida, where they're producing all the these athletes. They're coming from all over the nation now. 3-0 the count to Dayton. Nowhere to put her, and there is ball four. A walk will walk home a run. And it's a seven-run sixth inning for Texas. 12-1 lead for the Longhorns. Taylor just looking for that last elusive out. Four walks this inning. Six hits. And the pinch hitter is uh, Leanne Good at the plate for, for Texas. And for Ashton Maloney. Leanne's a sophomore from San Antonio. That's a ball and a strike. Really gotten out of hand here in the sixth <laughs> inning. Seven runs on the board by Texas. Casey West began the inning. She has given way to Ava Knoll. Here's trying to get out of this inning, looking for the final out of the sixth. Three one the count now to good. It's really a statement to this Texas team. Because Leanne Good was a standout player last year for them. So was Katie Simmons. And huh. so here they are pinch hitting tonight. And it just shows up and down just the, the status, the, the level of play that these Longhorns can compete at. Twelve one lead. Three two count. The pitch. Up high, ball four, walks in another run. It is 13 to one, Texas on top. Now an eight run, sixth inning for the Longhorns. And it looks like West will re-enter in the circle. They just need an out, and two back-to-back -back walks certainly don't help that. Once again, you just go back to the, you go back to your grit player. Put me in, coach, I'll, I'll get it done. Give her a chance to take a breath, sit down for a minute and come back in and see if she can get this last out. Biggest margin of victory for Texas in this series was the uh, first game ever between Baylor and UT in softball, 1998. It's an 11-0 win by Texas. Oh, wow. At the moment, they have uh, exceeded that up by 12. <laughs> Pinch hitter is Victoria Hunter for the Longhorns, with West back in the circle. Nobody on that field was even alive. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Hunter, a freshman from Houston, St. Pius X High School. This is away ball two. West delivers. That is a called strike. It's two balls and a strike to Hunter. Taylor has walked the bases loaded. Looking for that third out in the inning. Pitch up high. Oops. Five strike. <laughs> she did. It's uh, two balls, two strikes. Your pinch hitter, get, give yourself a chance to swing the bat. I know that you're struggling with pitching and get them across, but. Pitches away, it's three balls, two strikes. 
Do you want to come in and walk, or do you want to come in and have a chance at an at-bat? Here comes the 3-2 from Casey West to Victoria Hunter. Is inside ball four, walks in another run. It is 14 to one, Texas on top. That is five consecutive walks by Baylor pitchers. Six in the inning. Looks like Texas now brings another player from their bench up to bat. Ryan Brown to the plate for UT. Brown's a freshman from Thompson Station, Tennessee. How about that? Thompson Station, Tennessee. Oh, a cool name for a town. There it is. Swings, fouls it back. West is ahead in the count. No balls, two strikes. Independence High School there in Thompson Station, Tennessee. No balls, two strikes. That is ball one. Look good. Looks really good in a 14 to one game. <laughs> right. But it is ball one. West delivers. It's a pie, even counted two balls, two strikes. the 2-2 that is popped up in the infield coming on to make the catch is Leah Cran and the inning is mercifully junior right-hander from Mount Bellevue Texas Barbers Hill High School Simpson her 11th appearance on the year she's thrown 17 in a third innings total she comes in uh, to finish things off in the sixth inning 17 in the third innings pitch, but 31 strikeouts. Not that. <laughs> she does have a save to her credit. No other decisions for Simpson. Pitch hitter for Baylor, Ellington Whitaker to the plate. Sophomore from Houston, Kincaid School. Pitch hits for Sidney Collazos, leading off the sixth inning. On the count to Whitaker, the pitch by Simpson is low ball two. And we're down 14 to one after a nine run sixth inning by Texas. He's elected to uh, take their starter Riley Crandall out of the game leading into that sixth inning. No doubt we'll see Riley again this weekend. Have to. Maybe tomorrow, maybe Sunday, maybe both down in Austin. But in taking her out and saving Aaliyah Benford, maybe to start tomorrow for Aaliyah Benford in Austin. Casey West, Ava Noel pitched for Baylor in that rough sixth inning. It's three balls, two strikes now to Whitaker. the 3-2 from Simpson. That is a call strike three. Whitaker thought she had the walk on the full count pitch. Instead, plate umpire Christina Drum rings her up first out in the sixth inning. 14 to one lead by Texas. Run rule uh, most definitely in effect. Eight run uh, is the margin. Texas currently leads by 13. Anna Watson grabs a bat to hit with one out in the sixth inning. Oh, 
Well, Texas, or Baylor won the series opener last year against Texas in Austin in run roll fashion. It was just nine to one. That was a run roll victory for the Bears. Set them on pace to uh, sweep the series over UT. That was a year ago. Kelly, this is uh, one game, tough game, big loss by Baylor. But new day tomorrow as the series shifts to Austin. That's part of the glory of this. One of the great things about playing three. However, if you've got four really strong pitchers <laughs> in the That's circle right. for Texas, it looks a little different. 2-1 the count to Anna Watson. 41 hitter. It's it hard to right field, a base hit. Third hit of the night for the Bears. Pinch hit by Anna Watson off the bench here in the sixth inning. Oh, Watson not going down easy. And it looks like uh, this is Aaliyah Benford who grabs a bat. So we're talking about her maybe the starting pitcher. We don't know for sure, but maybe the starting pitcher tomorrow in game two of this series. She will get a pinch hit at bat here in the sixth inning tonight. Coach Moore sharing in the, the fun with Coach White, putting everybody in, <laughs> giving them all a chance. Wrong with that. 153 hitter on the year is Aaliyah Benford. First pitch strike one. One down, one on, sixth inning. Bears down by 13 to Texas in the sixth inning. Tegan Kavan's going to get the win for UT. Really nice outing for her in this Friday night series opener. The win, she'll run a record to 12 and 2 on the year. She was great in the circle. And fearless coming in hard on some of those inside pitches. Effective with the rise ball. Probably not as many strikeouts <laughs> as she would have liked. More walks than she would like. Mm -hmm. But she gets the win. That pitch skips in. Sophia Simpson. Her ERA will go down a bit. She was at 1.85 coming in. Texas with uh, four of the top 10 ERAs in the Big 12 Conference on their staff. Mm -hmm. Hit foul out of play. It's three balls, two strikes to Benford. Down, one on. Simpson gets the sign. Here comes the pitch to Benford. Just reaches out and makes contact to stay alive. Good number of our sellout crowd has uh, headed home for the evening. It was a great crowd here for this game tonight. It was. Good to Miss Sue Getterman. Great to see Miss Sue. Did you get to talk to her before the game? I did. There's a grounder in the left field, a base hit. I played here a long time ago, but I don't know how she still remembers me. <laughs> She's just one of those genuine people. So back-to-back -back pinch hit, singles in the sixth inning. Benford with the single off the bench. Just getting on top of that rise ball there. Visit to the circle by pitching coach Patty Ruth Taylor. We'll talk to Sophia Simpson. Is this conversation something like, hey, we're up by 13? <laughs> Just relax and pitch. Throw strikes. Let your defense do the work behind you. Oh, and by the way, you're pitching to some pinch hitters. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. A string of pinch hitters. Including uh, Paige King due up next or at the plate next for Baylor. If Fran re-enters, she will run at first base. 
And here is Paige King at the plate. The freshman from San Antonio, Antonian College Preparatory School. It's <laughs> a mouthful. It is. Paige King at the plate. A straight pinch hitter here in this sixth inning. Pinch hitters have delivered back-to-back -back singles. Baylor has two aboard with one out. No pitch. Catches the outer part of the plate for strike one. Thanks, Dan. This will be the widest margin of victory in the history of this series for UT. Previous high was 11 to nothing win in 1998. There's a grounder, a glove by the second baseman to first, and it ends on a double play. That is the ball game. Texas looking every bit the uh, number one team.